since Trump became a real political threat to the left all those years ago when he first began his run for president. We've often tried to point out how biased, dishonest, manipulative the mainstream media is. They can create and destroy a narrative at a whim, suppress real news and stop its circulation if it's damaging. What they do harms America. They increase racial tensions by manufacturing a fairy tale of systemic racism and impression. They hide away important information damaging to the puppets they've helped into government. We must sit on the sidelines against this Goliath, of an enemy whose riches and influence know no bounds and hope that there are enough critical thinking and curious individuals who dare to think for themselves and seek out the truth. Today we're talking about our friends at Project Veritas and their recent uncovering of the corruption in the mainstream media. Just before we begin this, as always, if you do enjoy content, please consider to subscribe, like, share the video, uh, help us get the message out and grow the community. Just a quick reminder as well, we are doing live live streams every Sunday. I will leave the information for that down in the description. So let's jump into this one. Connor, you have an article for us. I do have an article from our friends at the Daily Wire, um, who they're reporting on the latest Project Veritas video. And we are just saying a little bit before um, the video, weren't we? Uh, is James O'Keefe Batman? because he's this kind of vilified figure who keeps coming up with the goods and he's working tirelessly to save the nation. Mm. So we have here, newly released videos by James O'Keefe's Project Veritas on Tuesday allegedly show CNN executives discussing burying the Hunter Biden laptop story that was featured in the New York Post, as well as advocating for helping Democrat presidential candidate Joe Biden with Cubans in Miami by countering narratives promoted by President Donald Trump. It's almost as if... CNN had a Democratic bias. Uh, James O'Keefe said, according to senior vice president on CNN, Cynthia Hudson, recorded on Jeff Zucker's 9 a.m. telephone call, the reason that Cubans voted for Trump is because they're attracted to bullies. Trump has used the communism, socialism rhetoric as part of his hook for the Cubans in Miami, how that has resonated and how the Biden team has not done enough to counter that, Hudson said. This is all that that the only reason they are supporting Trump is because of that narrative. And that narrative, and the fact that sadly, I have to say, there's a population that's very attracted to bullies. And no one's countering it properly in Florida. The Cubans are going to vote for Trump, she continued, and that's terrifying. And so I think there is a way to counter the narrative in Florida that Biden's a socialist and that it's not being taken advantage of. Now, if you're one of our Hispanic viewers, and we know there's quite a few, welcome to the process of healing that we are all <laughs> promised. Um, I mean, Yayan, um, it's almost as if CNN had become an arm of the Democratic Party, you know? Like, like, is this the behavior we expect to see from supposedly independent media organization? It's funny, isn't it? Because obviously we've spoken about and we've been screaming about the bias in the mainstream. You know, there's bias in every aspect of the mainstream media. Obviously, there's no doubt about that. Fox News are obviously biased. I mean, less so much now, but they were biased towards the Republicans and Trump. They have many Trump fans there. There's no doubt about that. But there are far more biased left-wing media outlets, and they generally control the narratives. People listen to what they have to say, and they believe that they're being impartial, impartial and just presenting the news as it is they're not they've they've created this kind of personal vendetta against trump you see like J jim acosta like constantly going on about trump he's obsessed with the man this is a bloke who's supposed to be you know the white house representative for cnn and he's like getting into like personal battles and and uh fights with trump on twitter and stuff like this and now we've kind of see what are the conversations that are going on behind the scenes at CNN? And they actually just sound like your ordinary, um, <laughs> you know, Democrat who's just blaming minorities and calling them, effectively calling them idiots who have, who have been duped into voting, you know, Republican. That's how they think. It, it's funny. It's like they've had half of the thought here that, oh, look, uh, Cubans are voting for Republicans because they're afraid of socialism. And then they've not had the second thought the, the second part of that rational thought, which is, 
maybe that message doesn't resonate with them and we should come up with a different economic policy. No, they've gone, oh, it must be because they're just idiots. And you see this obviously with Democrats. Oh no, all of these all of these people that usually vote for us aren't voting for us anymore. It must There must be something wrong with them. <laughs> so it's just funny that they actually just think like ordinary Democrats. There's, there's not like some, some you know, uh, like evil... Um, geniuses behind the scenes here plotting away uh, no they're just idiot democrats who, who come up with the same stupid conclusions as, as the other ones do yeah yeah you know, i mean you're absolutely right and you mentioned that obsession with trump right but it, it's it's an obsession with denying minorities the right to an individual behavior isn't it because when they look at a minority and we said this a thousand times it seems but when they look at minorities, these people, they don't see an individual who is capable of achieving everything in the world. They see uh, victims and they see people who must, in order to kind of fit with that, what they consider a minority to be, they have to fit the victim model. And so, like you say, when somebody comes along and, you know, uh, convinces, uh, let's say, Hispanics to vote, uh, against what the Democrats think is, is the correct way to vote, they literally can't process it. And it manifests itself in this belittling. I mean, the implication here is that there's a machismo culture in Hispanics that makes them attracted to bullies. I mean, that is rooted in one of the most racist like perceptions world, of the worldview ever. It's rooted in the same kind of belief that Arabs are attracted to authoritarian leaders or that certain peoples, that like Chinese people, are attracted to authoritarian leaders. It's nonsense, you know? Um and this, you know, communism and socialism hope they brought up. They say Biden hasn't done enough to counter it, but firstly, you know, he can't because if he comes out <laughs> as actively against socialism and communism, he loses half his supporters. Um, and second, you know, they're speaking as if they are his campaign team. They're hmm. saying it's terrifying that people are going to vote for Donald Trump. Neutral arbiters of the news, my ass. Um, <laughs> And it's kind of apt that I finished that point talking about the news, isn't it? Neutral mm. arbiters of the news, because this isn't the only news they've been meddling with, is it? Yeah, exactly. This is just the this is just the first part of the quotes. Um, this to me is the more damaging thing, really. I mean, as I said, that they, they've just exposed themselves as normal Democrats there, but here, you know, they're actively talking about suppressing stories. So. Um, in a separate video, O'Keefe shows three top executives at the network, including the head of the company, essentially talking about not covering the Hunter Biden laptop story. I do think on the Breitbart, New York Post, Fox News rabbit hole of Hunter Biden, which I don't think anybody outside of that world understood last night, the Wall Street Journal reported that their review of all the corporate records showed no role for Biden on the Chinese deal. And yes, I do put more credibility in the Wall Street Journal than I do in the New York Post. Obviously, you know, we're not going with the New York Post story right now on Hunter Biden, um, which seems to be giving its marching orders to Fox News and the right wing echo chamber about what to talk about today. <laughs> Obviously, Hunter Biden's lawyer is quoted in that New York Post piece and will just continue to put out that this is the very stuff that the president was impeached over. This is the stuff that Senate committees looked at and found nothing wrong in. Joe Biden's interactions, interactions with Ukrainians and now having an email that perhaps there was a meeting with someone from Burisma is, it seems, Rudy Giuliani's sort of dream of vision of how to throw stuff at the wall in these closing days of the campaign. Hey, Jeff, it's just about, it's just David on the Burisma story and we should be extra careful about that, obviously, but I do think there's a media story what in the world are Maggie Haberman and Jake Sherman doing retweeting that story? So you can see here, like you said, they're not speaking, you know, like uh, neutral arbiters of the news who were like, oh, here's a story, What's it, whether it's merits, what aren't its merits. They're talking about, oh, uh, the story's you know, quite damaging and, 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 and look, Fox News are going with it. But uh, what we'll do is we'll just kind of talk on this angle and talk about, hey, no, look, they're actually, you know, Trump was impeached over this and, and that. And it's like, that's not, they're, they're talking like campaign staff. Like, how can we twist this against Trump? <laughs> not, not like, is this a real story or not? 
Yeah, definitely. And I mean, like, just look at the effect they had with this story, with, um, well, by denying this story too, because we were saying, we were one of the first ones to start really covering this, weren't we? Mm. Uh, we actually beat Tim Pool by uh, three or four <laughs> hours. So that's our, that's on our achievement sheet. So we said at the time, this is a cover up. And then we had all these lefties in the comment section, you know, oh, it's fake news. You're, you're racist. So, well, okay. <laughs> Shout out to you guys because what CNN have done here, they know it's a story and they admit it because they reprimand Maggie Haberman and Jake Sherman for retweeting it and talking about it. They make the active decision not to report on it. Why? <laughs> because they, they have chosen. It's too dangerous for you to know. And what happens then? Twitter and Facebook took the decision to censor this story based on the lack of mainstream media coverage, partially at least. Well, guess what? Twitter and Facebook got dragged into the Senate. So why isn't CNN being dragged into the Senate? They need to be in there and they need to be held accountable to this because when you're a mainstream media news organization, you have a responsibility. You have a uh, responsibility to the people to give objective news uh, coverage. Now, okay, you can have a biased opinion, fine but you still must provide uh newsworthy stories right mm. they didn't do it they abdicated their responsibilities and they must be held accountable and do you know what that you raise a good point is like you say facebook and twitter were called before the senate committee why aren't cnn i mean i guess obviously well no you, you know you're right yeah they should actually answer they should answer for for their actions um because they have actively tried to suppress this story and 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 despite we can see them here talking about like you say that it's a legitimate thing but they're just focusing on the angles in which that they can ignore it rather than talking about the le legitimacy to it um and it's funny it's because like they're saying here as well oh this is the stuff that senate committees looked at and found nothing wrong in and it's like oh look here's some evidence to show that a guy um you know did some dealings that were off the record but don't worry because his on the record dealings don't show anything about it and it's like that's not evidence like doesn't make any sense so the sort of rationale for why they shouldn't cover it as well is just ridiculous but you know they're mentioning these people like rudy giuliani and it's like oh he's, he's doing this and he's throwing that and it's like they're speculating about oh the trump campaign's trying to do this or that and it's like it's not your job it's just not your job to decide about those things here's the story is it is it real and credible? Yes, because they're even talking about um, Biden's lawyer, uh, Hunter Biden's lawyer as well, which obviously was one of the first things that we saw that you know made it credible because even his lawyer was talking about and asking for the laptop and this kind of thing. And it's like, so they know that the laptop is real. You know, if if you are just an impartial news news outlet, you just say, well, look, here's the information. Um, look, it may be true. Here's certainly something that shows that it may be true, uh, but also you could even throw it in. Oh, the Senate did this and they didn't find anything or whatever and all that. But it's a massive story. Pretending, and we remember at a time when we talked about the uh, was it Streisand effect, where they ignore it and actually it just makes it huge and bigger. And everyone would have just been talking about this amongst themselves uh, simply because they didn't report on it. And so obviously it did backfire on them in the end. But this is just one snippet of one conversation that we've had, that we've seen on the Hunter Biden story. We know that they, you know, deliberately didn't report on so many other different things. What I want to know is when are people just going to wake up to this idea that they cannot rely upon the mainstream media? These people do not care about their life. They don't care about the average American who's just going about their day and tr trying to, you know, better themselves. They're not interested in maintaining a kind of transparent government and, and holding them to accountability and holding them to scrutiny. They're literally now a propaganda arm of a party. They cannot be more partisan. And they've kind of duped millions of people into thinking that they are impartial when the reality is they're just like a covert campaign team. So and with, and without without the media being honest and and holding governments to scrutiny if joe biden does now become president we could potentially face four years where we don't even know like a lot of the stuff that's going on because no one's really even asking those questions that's the risk now that we face and um obviously cnn and places like that, that that's that's the norm that they've set so yeah, um 
<laughs> yeah, listen. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so I think anyway, that concludes uh, this video for today. I suspect if Project Veritas have done this, and they have this conversation, there are going to be more conversations coming out. So I, I really, really hope so. And I'd love to see a kind of an insight into other news outlets and the kind of, um, you know, behind the scenes conversations that are going on there. So I can't wait to see that if it does indeed happen. And of course, that's something that we'll be talking about if and when. Uh, just a quick reminder as well, before we go, obviously we are doing the live streams on Sunday. And if anyone watching now uh, would like to drop in, that would be much appreciated because we'd love to hear from people and, and, and obviously just have a bit of a back and forth going on in chat because it, it makes it a lot more interesting than than obviously us just talking to ourselves. So uh, as always, thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, we'll see you on the weekend.